Nuclear risk. Climate change. Biological threats. Disruptive technologies. These are complex issues with disastrous consequences. When it comes to raising awareness about these threats, scientists are left with a difficult question to answer. How do we communicate risk in a way that everyone can understand? Fortunately, the Doomsday Clock has done that for over 75 years now. To understand how, it's important to know the legacy behind the clock and the impact it has made throughout the years. The story of the Doomsday Clock starts with the founding of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists in 1945. The Bulletin began as an emergency action created by scientists who helped build the world's first atomic bombs. They saw an immediate need for a public reckoning in the aftermath of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Bulletin's board of sponsors was established in December of 1948 by Albert Einstein, with J. Robert Oppenheimer as its first chair. The Bulletin was created with two key missions in mind. One mission of the organization was to urge fellow scientists to help shape national and international policy. A second mission was to help the public understand what the bombings meant for humanity. These scientists anticipated that the atom bomb would be only the first of many dangerous presents from the Pandora's box of modern science. They were all too correct. In 1947, they released the first issue of the Bulletin as a magazine and asked an artist named Marto Langsdorff to design a magazine cover for them. After listening to their conversations about the growing nuclear threat, she conceived the idea of a clock ticking down to midnight, which eventually became the Doomsday Clock. Today, the clock serves as a metaphor for how close humanity is to destroying itself with technologies of its own making. Midnight on the clock symbolizes apocalypse, and the hands of the clock move closer and further away from midnight, depending on the level of risk humanity faces. The clock is set by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists' Science and Security Board, which is comprised of leading experts and scientists from all over the world. Over the years, the clock has broken out of the scientific community and into pop culture. Songs by The Who, Pink Floyd, Iron Maiden, Hozier, and more reference the clock. It's made appearances on talk shows such as Jimmy Kimmel and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. It also shows up in TV shows and movies such as Kim's Convenience, Madam Secretary, The Batman Movies, and Dr. Strangelove. We tend to act like the doomsday clock has a snooze button. In addition to its prominence in culture, the clock has also made impacts on politics and global policy. In truth, the doomsday clock is a global alarm clock. We need to wake up and get to work. It's also been mentioned on the U.S. Senate floor by Senator Ed Markey, who even brought a visual aid of the clock for a speech. The impact of the clock throughout history is undeniable, and the future of the clock is uncertain, which begs the question, what time is it on the clock now? In 2020, the Bulletin Science and Security Board set the clock the closest it had ever been to midnight at 100 seconds. They saw two simultaneous existential threats, nuclear war and climate change, that were compounded by a threat multiplier, cyber-enabled information warfare, undercutting society's ability to respond. They held the clock at 100 seconds in 2021 and 2022 because of long-developing negative international security trends. That was the time on the clock until the Bulletin Science and Security Board set the clock at 90 seconds to midnight, citing Russia's war in Ukraine as the main reason for the time change. In contrast, the furthest the clock has ever been from midnight was in 1991, when the board set the clock at 17 minutes to midnight due to promising developments in nuclear arms control at the end of the Cold War. This highlights an often forgotten aspect of the Doomsday Clock, which is that it can be turned back. Many organizations and individuals around the world are working in their communities to combat these issues every day. Learn more about their work, the issues, and how to get involved by signing up for the Bulletin's newsletter.